Continuing with the Triarchy Vector Signal Generator, I have connected the generator to the uh, computer. The two signals that you see here are the I and Q positive signals. They are connected through cables there up to the Rigol oscilloscope that you see at that point. Now this is an FM signal and notice the I and Q signals are the inverse of one another uh, or I'm sorry are 90 degrees shifted relative to one another. Up above on the spectrum analyzer is the uh, spectrum. The center frequency is set to a gigahertz and on each side you see the, uh, the side bands. Now being FM mathematically there are an infinite number of side bands but they become smaller and smaller so that at some point they become uh, insignificant or, or they can be ignored. But basically, if you are familiar with the way that uh, FM signals are generated and displayed on a spectrum analyzer, uh, you're aware that these are basically Bessel functions. If you watched the, uh, the series that I did on spectrum analyzers, you're already familiar with that and how you measure these signals. All I'm going to be doing here is showing some of the capabilities of this particular generator. Now, uh, once again, this is the spectrum with the gigahertz in the center and the sidebands. These are the I and Q signals. So now let's go over and take a look at the computer interface and how you control this vector signal generator. This is the interface of the uh, vector signal generator. You see here, the, uh, it, this is the name of the uh, particular software. The generator can work from 1 megahertz to 6.2 uh, gigahertz. Over on the right hand side, you see the device, its serial number, and the fact that it is connected via USB. Down in this corner is the RF on and off. Right now, the RF is on. If you click this, it goes to RF off. Now, on the left hand side are a series of uh, uh, software buttons. On the right hand side at the top are what are called the function keys. So for example, if you click on the mode, the, this section is what is called the, uh, the sub-mode or the second menu. So in the instruction manual, it will often tell you to click on a function key. That means to click up in this area on one of these buttons. Then it will tell you, in some cases, to click on a sub-mode or on the, uh, a uh, sub-level. That means in this area. So you click mode, and then here, for example, is to generate a single frequency without pulse modulation. A frequency which sweeps without pulse modulation. A frequency that hops but without pulse modulation. Then a single frequency with pulse modulation, sweep with pulse modulation, and a hopping with pulse modulation. So we're going to go with just single frequency without pulse modulation. Now on the right you'll notice that you can modulate that signal. For example, if you go to analog modulation, it offers you a series of uh, demo modulations. Now, you can load a file, or you can use one of these demos. For example, demo AM generates an AM. And you may notice over here, it's 
when when the unit is busy, in other words, while it's downloading that file, the a little uh, window appears here, a little uh, gray window. We are going to do a demo FM. Now here are the I and Q signals for the FM. Once again, remember this is a vector signal generator. So unlike an FM, uh, an ordinary FM generator, the way it generates FM is first to generate an, an I and Q signal, then apply the I and Q signal to an I and Q modulator. And if you're familiar with I and Q modulation or demodulation, you know that any signal can be generated with a combination of in phase and quadrature phase uh, signals into a, an IQ modulator. So these are the various types of modulation that are available. You can also get demo FM and so on. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, PM, which is phase modulation. You also can do frequency shift, positive frequency shift, negative frequency shift, and you can uh, set up the step count for the I and Q modulators. In addition to analog modulation, you also have digital modulation available. Once again, you can load a digital uh, modulation file or you can use a demo MSK, that's minimum shift keying, a demo QPSK, uh, I'm sorry, GMSK, uh, a demo FSK, and once again you can set the I and Q uh, count. You can also do the same thing with phase modulation. Load a file, do QPSK, which is of course quadrature phase shift keying. Let's do one of those. And now let's take a look at the constellation diagram. These colored keys across are for the display down below. Right now it is showing the frequency, I'm sorry, the IQ streaming raw data, that is this one. Let's change that to a constellation diagram. Now, QPSK is simply quadrature phase shift key. In other words, it is keying in the four quadrants, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Uh, in other words, this is the, uh, if, you, if you draw the, vac the axis down this way for the I and across this way for the Q, this is basically the plus, plus, uh, that is plus in the X, plus in the Y. This is the minus uh, plus, in other words, minus in the X, plus in the Y. And similarly, this is minus minus, this is minus plus. So uh, they do not show the I and Q axes in the constellation diagram, but you can mentally picture them as being right across with this being the origin. The uh, pattern image for the I and Q signals are shown down here. Once again, this is the actual uh, signal and you can adjust the, uh, the various uh, parameters of this in, in however, whatever way you want. So that is phase modulation. You can also adjust the low frequency output. Now the low frequency output is basically the arbitrary function generator. So once again you can load a file or you can use a demo uh, sine wave, a demo spiral wave, or a demo triangle wave. Once again, uh, the nice thing about this is that the low frequency signal is also available so you can use it both as a modulating signal internally as well as an external signal uh, for an arbitrary waveform generator. Now it can only do signs and triangles and a spiral. The spiral is useful in some certain applications that we may talk about at some point. Then the, uh, by the way, it shows an S11, S21 key. That is not implemented. Those are scattering parameters. Uh, they're input scattering parameters. 
Uh, I suspect that they intended to do this in conjunction with probably a spectrum analyzer. They also make a line of USB analyzers. The reason is you need some way to actually read the, the results. You couldn't do an S11 calculation with just a generator unless this, this generator has some unique uh, output circuitry that also includes uh, uh, <laughs> the ability to detect reflections. Let's not go there. So anyway, this is basically the, uh, the user interface. You'll notice up here that in the case of a uh, uh, sweeped or swept frequency, this is the start frequency, this is the stop. Now, since we're using a single frequency, notice down here it says single frequency without pulse modulation, the start and stop frequencies are equal. If there were, if you wanted to sweep, say, from 1 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz in 100 kilohertz steps, you would put in 1 gigahertz here, 2 gigahertz here, and 100 kilohertz here. This is the amplitude control. Right now it's set to 0 dBm. On at least two of the frequency ranges of this instrument, you can get up to 10 dBm output. Probably better to stay a little bit below 10, just so you won't be overheating any of your uh, equipment. The repeat time in this case is shown as 10 milliseconds. Uh, that is how often it changes the uh, the frequency. So for example, if you were scanning from 1 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz in 10 milliseconds, then at time 0 it would be at 1 gigahertz and at time 10 milliseconds later it would be at 2 gigahertz. Uh, the symbol rate is the rate of the I and Q signals. In other words, it's the modulation rate. And I have found this to be fairly easy to use. It comes with a number of files for both internal and external. You can load a file here, and you'll notice that in the uh, IQ modulation LF output section, you have, if you wanted to load a sawtooth, you could do that this one. Click on open and you notice we now have a sawtooth here down in the window. Let's look at the I and Q streaming raw data and then let's look at the I and Q modulation diagram. Now in this case since the I and Q is a sawtooth what you have is a frequency sweeping from one frequency down to another frequency. Uh, I'm sorry, a modulation frequency sweeping from one frequency to another. The carrier frequency remains at 1 gigahertz. So I hope this has been useful in giving you some idea of how this generator is used, how the uh, user interface works, and finally whether it might be useful in an application that you have in mind. I look forward to doing a lot of experiments with this uh, vector signal generator uh, over the coming weeks and months. And uh, if I uh, happen upon something that I think might be of particular interest, I'll try to make a video. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to wrap this one up and say uh, hope you have a nice day and hope to maybe see you at some point in the future.